I'd like to call to order the Hatfield Township Board of Commissioners workshop meeting for February 14th, <clears throat> 2018. Roll call. President Ziffel. Here. Vice President Hughes. Here. Commissioner Andrews. Here. Commissioner Rogers. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Here. First, we'd like to uh, wish everyone a very happy Valentine's Day. And uh, next, we would like to ask um, one of our longtime residents, a life member of the Hatfield Fire Company and one of the uh, longtime members of the back row guys, the guys who've been coming to our township meetings for many, many years, and they know more about the township. They've probably forgotten more about the township than many of us know. Ray Masser, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> All right, is there a, uh, a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Thomas, uh, second by Commissioner Rogers. All in favor of approving tonight's agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we can move forward. Citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments on agenda items? Oh, all right. Not seeing anyone. Any? We're going to move on to our consent items. Is there a motion to move into the record the consent items listed in your agenda? So moved. Motion by Vice President Hughes. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Those items include the engineer's report for the month of January the police report for the month of January, the HTMA meeting minutes of December 12 for 2017, the North Penn Water Authority minutes of December 19, the Calmer Fire monthly report of January, the Planning Commission meeting minutes of January 16, 2018, and the Park and Rec Board meeting minutes of January 2, 2018. With that, I'll call the question. All in favor of moving those items into the record say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, those are approved and moved into the record. All right, we have a special item. Um, the Honorable Ed Levine uh, is a district court justice that covers a portion of our township. And uh, periodically, he comes in and gives us an update on his office and how things are going. We're happy to have him. Thank you, Judge. Thank you for taking the time to come out to meet with us. Thank and, you. Uh, the floor is yours. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, I try to do this once a year. Come in, let everybody here in Hatfield know what's happening with the court. We're not just some little nook way out of the way for you guys. Uh, just want to let you guys know the numbers and how things are going. I guess I'll hit a little button to keep things going. But before I start, um, I just want to point out and give credit to Hatfield Township Police Department. This has been a tough year for them, obviously, with the loss of uh, Tom Starner. As far as the court goes, they did not miss a beat. Uh, they were on top of everything. Uh, there really wasn't any issues with the court. Uh, they did a great job considering the stress and the emotional strain of that. Uh, so I wanted to point that one out right off the bat. They did a fantastic job. Um, I also want to thank my staff ahead of time. Uh, we were basically short-staffed all year, and as you're going to see, this was probably our heaviest year ever at our court. Uh, in terms of caseload for traffic, non-traffic, civil, et cetera. Uh, so I want to give a real shout out to my staff. They did a great job. Normally we're supposed to have four and a half. We had basically three and a half staff members, a part-timer who was there, uh, and a couple of trainees. So uh, considering our numbers, they did very well. So we'll go to, which button do I hit? Top one? There we go. So the first slide is our overall numbers. Um, and that just shows overall caseload, uh, what we had in 2017. That includes traffic, non-traffic, and criminal cases. And clearly you can see Hatfield's busy. Uh, you guys are very busy, and you're busy on the, uh, on the Judge Duffy side as well. Uh, in fact, her numbers overall were the greatest in the county. A lot of that's traffic, uh, but it's still a lot of caseload. Um, Hatfield up 34%. Again, I correlate that, and I'll explain a lot of that. The more you increase your police force, the more eyeballs you have out there working, the more you're going to get more citations, the more stuff like that. Um, but nothing to be alarmed about in terms of overall numbers. Uh, we're up 27% from last year. Uh, that's our highest total since Hatfield joined our court. Our court used to be just Lansdale and Talamence, and we got Ward 2, 3, and 4, and Hatfield Borough in 2014. Uh, criminal cases are roughly the same as last year, about a 5% decrease, actually, uh, from 2014. Let's see here. Oh, those are the good overall numbers. Uh, about a 5% decrease. 
Uh, no anomalies uh, overall in the court. Uh, knock on wood, we haven't had a homicide yet since I've been a judge, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, landlord cases, landlord tenant cases are roughly the same. The biggest jump for our court was civil cases, up about 48.6%. I attribute that to a lot of credit card debt. They're coming after you, so pay your credit cards. Uh, they're really starting to get aggressive about going after credit card debt. Um, also traffic up 28%. Again, more increased uh, new officers, not just here in Hatfield, but in Talmadge and in Lansdale as well. And non-traffic cases were up 47%, and that is because Lansdale is giving parking tickets at uh, a much higher rate so those are filtering into the court but we're working on that so nothing to get alarmed about in terms of the overall number um, and now we will move to our Hatfield numbers okay Hatfield the criminal is down slightly from last year we're at minus six percent about nine less complaints from last year no anomalies nothing unusual um, you guys tend to get a lot of uh, retail theft over at the Giant and the Coles and things like that, and DUIs are pretty standard, uh, but nothing too crazy uh, with the criminal. And it's nice, things are pretty much evening out. In terms of traffic, uh, the traffic again, it's up 15%, and that's the highest total for Hatfield since 2014 in our court. Uh, but again, traffic tickets are correlated to manpower. When you have more officers, you're going to get more tickets. And I believe we've had six new officers in the last year uh, with Hatfield Township Police. So that increase is, is going to increase the number of traffic tickets. Uh, but there's nothing alarming in the numbers or nothing to say, hey, they're going out, going after tickets. Plus, we don't get any money. The police department really doesn't get it. It goes to the county and to the state. Uh, so there's no incentive there in terms of getting traffic tickets. In terms of non-traffic, um, things are up 33%. Nothing unusual, nothing extraordinary, pretty comparable to the 2014 numbers uh, that you guys had. And overall, everything has been excellent. Uh, the police force has been outstanding. They work really well. It's difficult because we're really far. Uh, our court is really far from the police station. It's about a 15, 20-minute drive. So I do my best to get them in and out as much as possible and keep them back on the streets and not have them tied up. And I try to be timely. I try my best to be there on time, make sure they're there on time, and we get them back out because I really don't want to get them tied up. It's, it's 15, 20 minutes just to get to the court. That means 15, 20 minutes to get back considering traffic. So uh, we do our best at the court to try to keep things moving and not have anyone tied up. Our warrants and suspensions are right on time. Everything's good. We just got audited last month, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, I think everything will be fine on that end. We haven't had any formal complaints about me or any of the officers or any of my staff, so that's doing good. And the weddings are even keel. We did 50 last year, 50 the year before. I did a wedding today. Baby cried the whole time, but we had a good time. Uh, so overall, everything in the court is good. I am welcome to uh, any questions you guys have. If there's anything you don't understand or you want to find out about, now's a good chance to do it. Anyone? Oh, they just make my job easy. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. And that's it. Your Honor, thank you for coming out again. Thank you for taking your time to come out and let us know what Hatfield looks like, what increases and whatnot in the various areas. And, and especially thank you for your kind words to our police force. Uh, that is uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah, they've been excellent. Thank you. All You're right. welcome. Thanks. Have a great night. All right. With that, we're going to move on to committee reports. First is Planning and Zoning Committee, Commissioner Rogers. Thank you. Uh, the first item is land development for uh, data logic on Sterling Drive. You take yes, that? thank you, Commissioner Rogers. <clears throat> there are there are uh, several projects on the Planning and Zoning Committee um, list for this evening. A little more activity than we've had recently. Um, data logic is approximately a five-acre site on Sterling Drive uh, in the line Lexington Industrial Park. I could get my pointer to work it would help but there we go uh, it is the the last lot in the old section of the industrial park and uh, the bridge across the stream is just beyond this lot uh, the, the lot had previously been approved for uh, final approval by the by the board of, of commissioners and um, it was not built so um, after several years, DataLogic came along, picked up the ball, and, uh, and came up with a new plan. 
Tom Hanna is here from Gilmore and Associates. They designed the project. At this point, it, is, um, it has been through all the approval processes with the township. The Planning Commission has recommended approval. The Montgomery County Planning Commission has recommended approval. The project consists of about a 16,000 square foot building with associated parking. And um, I believe that it is ready for the board's, um, the board's approval in two weeks. If there are any questions, Mr. Hanna, I'm sure can answer them for you. A couple of questions. I know it's data logic, but what, is, what type of facility for, the, for purposes of not only the people here, but the people who watch, what type of facility are we talking about? Is this like a large warehouse? Is it going to have offices? Will it be a bolt, bit of both? Go to the mic. I'm Hannah with Gilmore and Associates. Uh, Rob Burns is with me tonight as well. He's uh, with Data Logic and could answer any specifics. But it's essentially an office with a little bit of uh, research and development. Uh, they're currently located up in Telford. Um, at this point, they're leasing that facility, getting out of a lease, and coming here to build their own. So uh, again, it's it's about 80 staff with um, primarily office, but a little bit of research. What type of research are they doing on site? <laughs> Tom said, uh, Rob Burns, I'm a, the program manager for this project for Data Logic. Uh, our, our company, the research and development is based on uh, barcode scanning and reading um, and development of products for warehouse and also point of sale uh, companies. You go to Giant, go through self checkout, that's our barcode scanner right there. That's primarily our focus. Okay. Any other questions? Have they satisfied all the engineering requirements? There aren't any exceptions or? No, this was, uh, we had done a review uh, prior to the planning commission meeting. They got revisions. It was a, one of the shortest letters I've done in years. Um, they made revisions, got the plans back in. We have a February 12th revision, uh, review letter that literally just is a listing of the various Um, there's one waiver uh, for slope for grading. Uh, so yeah, they're they're good to go. All right. Anyone else? So uh, I'm assuming we the applicant would be asking us to move us to next meeting's agenda for consideration. Gonzio will have a resolution ready for you that evening. So if I can get what looks like a consensus from the uh, rest of the members. Okay, Aaron, if you would move that to our uh, next meeting in two weeks. I don't exactly remember the date. 28th, yes, sir. 28th of February. <clears throat> and uh, so thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. And then what we'll, I know you know the process, but essentially we'll have another probably open opportunity for people to ask questions, ourselves included, and then we would take action on the application that evening. Thank you thank for you. coming out. Okay. Okay, item two is a minor <coughs> land development for um, Country Time, 847 Bethlehem Pike. This is Country Time Sheds, which is already located in Hatfield Township. They currently lease property just south of the Ambler Wood Stove property on Bethlehem Pike. Um, they're going to move their operation. They've purchased a piece of property, approximately three acres, um, which is on the same side of Bethlehem Pike, but north by about half a mile or so and they'll be running the same operation. The existing property has several old um, marginal dwellings on the property, which uh, all, all but one of which will be removed. The other, the other um, remaining home will be converted to an office, <laughs> and then they'll be adding, um, property sits sits right here. It's just south of the, the New Royal Farms is up at the intersection at Line Lexington Road. So it's two properties south. And I think if we can look at the land development plan, um, what you can see is, is a storage area, which is shaded. 
and then um, some new parking area in here. The one home, which will be converted to an office, sits back in the area that I'm outlining right here. They, um, they have applied for a PennDOT highway occupancy permit, um, which I don't believe has been issued at this point. But the, uh, that, I believe I, that's the only outside agency approval that, that remains. They did go to the zoning hearing board in order to get approval for the exterior storage of sheds, and that approval was granted with certain conditions, mainly having to do with setbacks off of Bethlehem Pike and the specific area to be used for storage. Um, other than that, Josh Gross is here from RCMA, um, the engineers for the, for the project. If there are any questions, I'm sure that he can fill in any blanks that I've left. Similar first question, if you could describe the property not only for us but also for the people who are here, just generally what is, what's the facility going to be used for? If you could. Uh, the property will be used, excuse me, will be used for display and sales of outdoor sheds. Um, typically the sheds are selected at the site and then delivered from directly from the factory. So last movement in and out of the site of, of the product. So there'll be offices on site as well as a part of that? There's a sales office, typically um, two people work there. So all the existing buildings except for the one will be taken down? Correct. Which building were you going to um, occupy? Um, but not being removed. If you're looking at the property from the road, it's back through the, some trees and to the left, the largest property. The ones near the front um, are taken down, and there's another small one on the right side halfway back. Okay. So there's actually, yeah, there's, um, there's also a, a, like a pole barn next to that house along the property line near the 309 handbag outlet that will remain. All right. Any other questions, comments? All right, hearing none, then I will look to see if there's a consensus to move this to our next agenda. It looks like there is. Aaron, if you would move this to our next agenda, next meeting, February 28th. Absolutely. Item, item three is a minor subdivision with uh, JW Acquisitions, 1311 Welsh Road. Yes, thank you. This is, this is a property which sits right at the corner of Clearview Avenue and Welsh Road. Uh, Right, right on the on the edge of the township. Um, oh, that's perfect. There's an existing home on the property, and as you can see, it has a, a large rear yard. It's just over an acre in size, and the proposal is to subdivide the property into two lots, with the existing home remaining on the front lot, and then creating a new building lot to the rear. Um, because of the uh, corner location and because of the rights of way on both Clearview and uh, and Welsh Road, there was a need to get relief from the zoning hearing board to allow the uh, the front yard dimensions and the lot area to be calculated from the legal right of way as opposed to the ultimate right of way. That was granted by the zoning hearing board, and there was also um, minor setback relief just for the location of the existing garage on the property and that was also granted by the zoning hearing board um, so the proposal this evening um, before you is just to allow the subdivision of the um, of the existing lot into two creating one new building lot um, again this one has been through all the approval processes through the township um, developers engineer just walked in and and the developers are, are in the audience if anybody has any questions. Um, but it, again, this, this has been through all the approval process. It has gotten a recommendation from the local planning commission. We're glad you just arrived. There's normally about 15 or 20 questions each engineer has to address. If you need a moment or two to prepare, just any, any questions or comments. Unlike the other ones, this is a residential piece of property that we're uh, th that's going to be used it's going to be used as a residential piece of property right so there's nothing particularly unique about it or about the use um any question sorry so does the developer own both properties now or is this the uh, property with the home on it or is that the homeowner yeah, 
At home discovery done a little bit, didn't it? A couple years ago, front facade. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Hearing none, I'll look to see if there's a consensus among the board members to move this to our next meeting. Yep. So this will be moved to our next meeting, February 28th. You got here just in time. Well done. Your timing was perfect. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, this room is videotaped, so we'll billable hours. Can be <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd put this many in. We have a course record, actually. <laughs> They'll never beat that, trust me. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Rogers, any other? Uh, there's one more left here. The last one is uh, the Route 309 Plaza. A revised resolution. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Rogers. This is a project that the board has seen several times in the past. Uh, it, it did receive approval from the Board of Commissioners back in, I believe it was 2008 or 2009. Um, it, it then sat on the back burner for quite a while and came back in um, about a year and a half or so ago. And they received uh, revised approval for the property. This, sits, this property sits right at the corner of Orvilla Road and Route 309. Um, it's a essentially a, a vacant vacant parcel right now and it's adjacent to the 309 Plaza Shopping Center. This the property when it's developed will be joined with the 309 Plaza Shopping Center and will consist of uh, three pad sites. The reason the project is before you this evening is to phase the um, approval. So as opposed, instead of coming in and putting all of the improvements in for the entire property, the, the developer is proposing to only put the impro improvements in that are necessary to construct a Wendy's. They have a, they have a letter of intent and, and an agreement with Wendy's to construct a facility on the property. And rather than putting all of the improvements in and run the risk of having to remove some as other tenants are secured, they have worked out um, with staff, they have worked out a plan that would allow the improvements to be constructed. And you can see on this plan, all the areas that are shaded would be constructed at this point as phase one. The shaded pad site in the upper portion of the, of the plan is the Wendy's and then all of the roadway improvements along 309 and Orvilla Road would be constructed as, the, as part of the first phase as well as the connection out to Orvilla Road and the connection into the existing shopping center. So we felt that that would allow the shopping center to function completely and all the improvements around the perimeter to be constructed, uh, but it would still allow the remainder of the site, the other two pad sites, to be unfinished until, until they uh, achieve tenants for those sites, for those portions of the property. So the, the the, what would happen, or if the board is comfortable with it, what would happen is in two weeks then there would be an approval resolution to amend the previous approval to provide for the phasing. Then the project would move forward with the Wendy's and hopefully, hopefully the balance of the project then would be completed in relatively short order. Um, the, um, Brian and, and Kristen and I have worked with the engineer for the applicant to come up with all the appropriate contributions so that those are all done consistent with the original approval. And really the only difference is that instead of being constructed in one fell swoop, it'll just be done. But, with those undeveloped areas, how are we going to keep that aesthetically pleasing because we know that this applicant sometimes we have to prod him quite a bit to uh, maintain his property and we we have had some some pretty detailed discussions with uh, with he and his engineer and uh, it, it will be i'm sure it will continue to be a challenge but we will do our best to try and keep those pad sites as ma as well maintained as possible have a time frame as to uh, if this does get approved for the phasing no. uh, 
or when the Wendy's will be started? Uh, oh, the, the Wendy's, the agreement with Wendy's is to start right away. As soon as, as, soon as they prepare land development agreements and record the plans, the, the agreement with Wendy's is to start immediately. That portion of the site. And I think what's significant really for the township is that the improvements on Orvilla Road and 309 would be done. This will create additional turning lanes on Orvilla Road and it will create additional diesel lane, an additional diesel lane on Bethlehem Pike. So that's something that, that we've been looking forward to having done since the original approval was accomplished. Hopefully that will create a better market for the other two pad sites. We would hope so. All the road work gets done prior to Commissioner Thomas's theme basin towards the bottom of that screen adjacent to a property where a fence was put up stipulate that that, prop, that portion of that development plan gets uh, seeded it will be that roughly 80% probably closer to 90% of the stormwater management facilities will be installed as part of this first phase because of the way everything's like literally connected it made more sense to they have to put in both there's there's uh an above ground basin that's closest to the bottom of the sheet i'll say and the detention basin that they show above it is uh is more of a rain garden but those two facilities will be installed and and like most basins now they will be planted specific basin plantings um so the the only the only thing that's the only areas that are going to remain raw are the two pad sites themselves, um, and and the rest. There's there's actually quite a bit of landscaping that they're going to be part of this phase. Aaron, did did that slide? Did they send that over? Yeah, that's all you got. There's. Bottom line, with the, the the way the engineer set up the phasing, um, he's phasing the landscaping as well. But the majority of the landscaping is also so they're going to have to go in, grade out the pad sites, stabilize those areas. But then in putting in the landscaping, you know, away from the pad sites themselves, it'll actually dress the site up quite a bit. It's not going to leave them what they have now, you know, barren area that they can collect. Stuff. Or that the landscaping is included and will be done in that first patch site towards that property. But that's done. That yeah, I, don't, I have. Let me just. See. I don't. I don't see it. I just just be sure it's included that when that patch site is finished or started and finished, that area is finished with it. Yeah, resident. that entire area is included in phase one. So yeah. all of the landscaping in that area would be done before before they would get an occupancy permit for the fast food. Okay. But I had it. That's Thank a path you. up at the top, correct? Any other questions? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't. <clears throat> right here, Bob? Yep. Oh, and that, that pedestrian path will be part of phase one as well. And and there's there's a, a series of, of uh, trees and shrubs that go along with that. So the engineer did a worked with like I said the work of staff to make sure it gets done right. Any other questions, comments? All right, so then we will move this to our agenda for two weeks from now, where resolution will be presented for our consideration to phase that uh, development. Uh, nine. Good, that's it for planning and zoning. All right, we're going to jump right into Public Works. Vice President Hughes. Okay, I'll start off by letting you know that the Township Public Works and Lansdale Public Works has begun clearing the newly acquired parcel on Moore Road to start for a parking lot at Swiker Park. Um, the weather cooperates. That should be done before the softball and baseball seasons. And Public Works is doing their best to patch any potholes that appear on local roads. Uh, if you have any concerns, call the township um, to report a pothole. Uh, any of the roads <coughs> in Hatfield, including Orvilla Road, most of Cal Path, 40-foot road and County Line Road and Bethlehem Pike and Allentown Road. 
and Welsh Road are owned and maintained by PennDOT, so if you have a problem there, call 1-800-FIX-ROAD. Um, and then I guess we have the Walnut Street Bridge reimbursement. I think Aaron will take us through that. For Commissioner Hughes, thank you. Just, just a quick slide just to illustrate the significance of this. We know the bridge has been completed. It's the last bridge of many now that has been reconstructed or replaced <laughs> after over the last few years. Total project cost ended up being uh, just shy of $1.3 million due to a, a grant um, that the township received several years ago for reimbursement. Uh, before the board tonight and in the packet is the actual reimbursement agreement from PennDOT for review. And in two weeks, I'll ask the board to consider approving that. I think it's one of the easier decisions the board will ever have to make, uh, accepting a little over a million dollars from PennDOT to, to reimburse for this cost. So in the end, total township costs for the local taxpayers here little over $250,000 for a bridge that should be there for the rest of everyone's lives in this building, hopefully. Um, so good news, and it's the last of, like I said, several. So we won't have to talk about bridge replacements or the cost associated with these bridges because all of us know who's, who's driven over the Walnut Bridge. It is not a significant structure, yet it's $1.2 million. So it's nice to get that off our books and complete it and reimburse for 80% of it. Do you have any time frame on when we get that reimbursement? I'm told it's a quick turnaround, and we did get it for Maple a few years ago, many of you remember. Um, so once this agreement's approved, I have to do a few administrative things through uh, PennDOT's website, but probably in the next month. Great. That's great. Very good. So the other things I have is we have approved the dump truck purchase in the budget, uh, and in your packet is the, uh, the uh, price for that. Also, you have the pole barn project. That's at Public Works there. That's in your packet also. And uh, the Public Works pickup truck purchase. So all that stuff will be on the agenda in, in two weeks. If there's nothing else on the Public Works, we're going to jump right into Park and Recreation Committee. Commissioner Thomas. President Zipfel, I don't know if I went over fire and ice that we had in January, but uh, it, there's a... Uh, repeating but it was an excellent event the weather couldn't have been better for us um, the township staff public works and parks and rec staff did an awesome job um, it was pretty well attended we changed it a little bit we moved it inside the pool complex and that seemed to work a lot better it flowed much nicer so we look forward to doing that again next year with the onset of spring coming up and the spring like temperatures that we're having we have lots of things going on for the spring um, preschool sports explorers we're partnering with Cal Sports Academy to bring your little ones some early sports education you can join us for an introduction to basketball soccer football t-ball and noodle hockey I'm not sure what noodle hockey is but I'll have to learn about that one the spring session runs uh, starting March 13th through uh, April 17th it'll be on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, at Hatfield Township Administration Building. The program is geared for children three to five years of age. The cost is $75 for the entire six-week section, and you can register at HatfieldRec.com. Earth Day is coming up. Ha Hatfield Township will recognize Earth Day on Saturday, April 14th, so in exactly two months. Pre-register to volunteer that day with our EAC and Shade Tree Commissions at the Hatfield Township Nature Center. Uh, volunteers will enjoy post cleanup activities such as pizza, vendors, prizes, music, a moon bounce, and more. Uh, volunteers must pre register, so you can call the township building at 215 855 0900, extension 126, to register. Five and Dime Race, our annual uh, Hatfield Race series is back again and better than ever. Registration for our first race, the Five and Dime, is set to open. Five and Dime runs, it'll be on Sunday, April 15th at the uh, Aquatic Center. Take the challenge and register for all three races. Receive a special series challenge medal and special gear. More information on registration will be available on the Township website, www.runtheday.org. If anyone is interested in volunteering on race day, you can uh, contact Ashley O'Neill at uh, aoneill at Hatfield township.org her email address the aquatic center season passes are now open so you can go online and register for your season pass 
You can take advantage of the new software and register online with no extra hassle or fees, and that would be at HatfieldRec.com. You can also visit the Township website for a full listing of available season passes and fees. First early discount period ends March 2nd at 12 p.m. So make sure you get in there quickly. Summer Rec Camp registration is open as well. The camp runs for nine weeks through June, July, and August. Registration is available on a weekly basis. There are several available discounts. Camp calendar and handbook are currently available on the Township website. Please review all information prior to registration and visit HatfieldTownship.org for more information, details, and registration. Indoor Pickleball. We're partnering with XL Sports to offer indoor pickleball. The current season of pickleball is February 5th through March 30th, Mondays and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 11.30, and Wednesdays from 1 to 3 p.m., and that takes place at XL Sports Facility. It's $10 per resident and $15 for non-resident. Register online at HatfieldRec.com, and be sure to stop by the Township Building to pick up your pickleball card. Our Get Fit series continues. Uh, so we've got, coming in the spring, we have wake-up call Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 a.m. to 6.45 a.m., and that starts March 12th through April 18th. It's at the community room here in the township building. Residents are $60, non-residents $75. For those of you who don't want to get up that early, we have after work hustle Mondays and Thursdays, 6.15 to 7 p.m. That starts March 12th and runs through April 19th also here in the community room. It's also $60 for residents and non-residents is 75. We also have yoga on Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. That starts March 15th and goes through April 19th. Again, here in the community room in the township building. The fee for that is residents are $30, non-residents 45. And Zumba on Tuesdays from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. I think if we all join these, we're just going to be really... Uh, Shape. Yes, I think so. So that runs from March 13th through April 17th, again, here in the community room. Residents $30, non-residents $45. And all of those activities you can register at HatfieldRec.com. And last but not least, as the winter season winds down, we still have discount ski tickets. So you can stop by here and pick up any tickets if you want to catch some of the last snow. And that's all I had. All that and pickleball still finds a way to dominate <laughs> conversation <laughs> year-round, winter, spring, summer, or fall. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. You're welcome. <clears throat> all right. Uh, public safety, uh, just a... Uh, quick announcement. Officer Alex Marchak, who was offered conditional employment at the last public meeting, successfully passed all of his pre-employment exams and has begun training with the department. He will be ceremoniously sworn in along with another officer in the coming months. Um, we will also have a second conditional officer for an applicant in two weeks at the regular meeting. These two additions are getting us to our anticipated number of police officers for the year for 2018. Um, every year we always um, kind of renew our commitment to public safety and in doing so in particular we were focusing on the hiring of two police officers to get to an expected number uh, of police officers based on everything from uh, number of residents to number of incidents and I think those are the last two pieces of the uh, personnel puzzle as far as the police officers are concerned that will get us exactly to our targeted number in 2018 so chief again I echo what uh, on behalf of everyone I echo what um, uh, District Justice uh, Levine said, which was that you do a fantastic job, your entire staff does, and we thank you very much. All right, Finance Committee, Commissioner Andrus. Yes, just a brief update. Uh, the good news for the Township's <coughs> police and non-uniformed defined pension plan is that this for 2017, it was a 16% return uh, for the investments for all those funds. This is uh, double the return assumption that was used to calculate the township's liability, so that's great news. Been listening to the stock market, 2018 is not off to a great start, but hopefully that'll turn around soon to provide more good news for the township taxpayers. Taxes are, are now being collected in the discount period for the township and county taxes. Another good time to remind everyone that uh, the township has not, or the township tax has been level for the last four years. 
Tax collector Tina Murphy will be at the township building on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8.30 to noontime and available at our home office at 2028 uh, Lenhart Road from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. on those same days until March 29th. All right. Uh, next is our township manager's report. Aaron. Thanks, Mr. President. I'm excited to be able to preview our the township's new <coughs> website, which will go live tomorrow. And I've got, oh, that's Judge Levine. Okay, so many of you have been onto our website. You've seen that it's rather stale and has not been updated for several years. Um, as we went into this process, and first I'd, I'd like to thank Justin, uh, who's in the back there, for his efforts throughout the entire process. He certainly provided a lot of leadership um, and, and expertise that was, uh, that was absolutely needed. Um, but as we went and looked at what are we going to make the new website to look like, uh, we wanted to make sure it was data-driven, not necessarily anecdotal and based on opinions, and could, because what we've noticed over the years for websites, everybody wants something on the website. So what happens then over 10 years, you have a website that's, that's too busy, clunky, and has a lot of buried pages, and we re don't really know what's on there, right? And so it's not effective. So when a new user comes to the website, they have no idea where to go. They have no idea what to find. We just have so much stuff on there. So we wanted to strip it down, <coughs> make it clean, concise. Well, some of the statistics from 17 when we looked at the analytics was, we had 284,000 page views in the Hatfield Township website. Of those, and many of those could be some type of uh, you know, quick on and off or even some type of robots, Justin was explaining to me, some ad bots, things like that. Of those, 108,000 were actually engaged visitors, ones that were going from page to page and looking for something based on the data. So 108,000 engaged visits to the Township uh, website in one year. Of those, 57% were viewing the website from their phone or their tablet, which makes sense. I think a lot of us obviously realize that's part of our life. One of the disadvantages of our current website is that we did not have a mobile view. So when you go to our website now from your phone, it still shows up in the same scale that you would see on your computer. So when you're looking at it from a mobile device, you cannot see really any of the text. You cannot uh, go through the menus, and you really can't find what you're looking for. Um, of that 108,000 engaged, 66,000 of them were unique. So 66,000 different IP addresses, which could mean 66,000 people, probably less than that, but that's a significant in a town with only 18, roughly 18,000 residents. Um, that's pretty significant. So what we saw when we looked at the data was pretty much everyone's coming to the website to look for information about the Aquatic Center and other parks and rec. Specifically, 2017, our top nine pages visited of them, five of them are aquatic center related. So you have the home page, which is the number one that people are coming to. Then aquatic center, day passes about the aquatic center, season pass aquatic center, police department to see pictures of Chief Tierney, uh, hours, hours in operation of the aquatic center, uh, features of the aquatic center, contact us at the aquatic center, and then people are checking out the Octo Half to see some of the details on that. So not surprising. Um, the commissioners may feel slighted that not that many people are coming to watch the videos, but uh, not at all. <laughs> majority of people want to know when you're having events, what kind of events, when do they open, when do they close, and what's the cost. Uh, so we decided we're going to build a website around that. So as you see, here's our current website. Not a bad website for 1999 or whenever we designed it, but it, you know, it's time to move on. So new website, a much fresher look, a cleaner look. Um, you can see, like, like most modern websites now, you have large pictures and a lot of menu bars that drop down. And we created the menu, menu, menu bars based on behavior and what was interested uh, in, in, in our visitors. So, and, and this is just a PowerPoint. It's not a, I, I thought the, the internet would collapse when I started using this, of course, live. So we just have some screenshots of what it will look like. But you can see the aquatic centers prominently displayed, the police department, parks and rec. Uh, some of the permits, and you know, we have a how do I. We have at least three different opportunities on this page that you can click and sign up for a season pass at the Aquatic Center, which is what people want to do. So when you scroll down, you'll see, again, buttons. You can find our municipal code, the ordinances, calendar of events, right to know requests, which we do get a significant amount of. Program registration takes you right into the Aquatic Center registration or summer camp or all the classes that Commissioner Thomas just talked about. 
um, or you can visit the police department. Then we have some of the recent news and then just upcoming events down there. So when you go to the website tomorrow, you'll see all the menus pop up here with sub menus that you can navigate the site. But again, based 100% on, on data and on what the users are looking for. So hopefully the feedback will be what we deal with now is we have no idea where to find that. Hopefully we won't hear that and we will hear this is a much easier site to navigate. That's the goal. So tomorrow at some point, mid-morning after Justin has to do a few things on our end to make it go live, we'll also be, um, on, we'll be launching a new domain name as well. They'll be added to our others right now, Hatfield-Township.org. We now own the domain name of uh, Hatfield.org. So it's a much easier domain name. But all three that, we, that we've had will still work. They'll all get pointed to the same website. But Hatfield.org is, is what we uh, are currently going to market, and, and that is a, the domain that we own. It was owned by someone else. Yeah, there was someone up until about six months ago that owned Hatfield.org, and when it expired, we snagged it. Question. <laughs> There are a few other Hatfields out there. There's one in England that, that we get calls for people wanting to <laughs> sign up for their race or for whatever. But you want a Western Pennsylvania? Okay. All right. So the other thing I wanted to mention was the mobile view and the, the fact that 57% of the users come using a tablet or device. So now, currently, if you come on your phone, this is what you're going to see. You can't really, besides the picture, you can't decipher any of the text. So the new view, it uh, scales all of the pictures to your phone and fits, and you'll see this doesn't give it necessarily any justice, but when you visit tomorrow on your phone, you'll see that it works really well, and as you scroll down, you'll see the buttons, and you'll be able to navigate it a lot easier than the way it's currently uh, done. And that 57%, my guess, is only going to grow, and in a few years, we'll look at the data, but I'm sure it'll be up to 75 80% as, as we go, as we all sort of live our lives through our devices. So we're excited to launch that. You'll see that tomorrow. <clears throat> Uh, appreciate all the staff and all the feedback. It's a long process trying to clean up a, an old established website and, and, and make it more efficient and, and better. So we're finally there and we're going to launch it tomorrow and uh, pretty excited about that. Looking forward to feedback. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, okay, my other item is uh, not quite as exciting as a new website. It's just <laughs> a uh, housekeeping item, if anything. We were notified by the HTMA that the ordinance needs updated per EPA regulations. The EPA is asking for all wastewater treatment authorities to have a non-significant categorical industrial user definition within the ordinance per the EPA regulations. The EPA definition of this is exactly what the HTMA will adopt. So I've been given language that matches exactly what the EPA is requiring to be included in the ordinance. HTMA is asking us if we would advertise and approve this amendment, which simply puts a definition of this type um, into the ordinance. So it doesn't change necessarily anything uh, regarding the operations or anything regarding the, the fees for the residents. It simply adds a definition that the EPA is requiring not only HTMA, but all um, sewer authorities, I would imagine, throughout the country. Um, so they've requested that, and if the board is comfortable with adding this definition, which is exactly the language of the EPA, uh, we'll need to advertise, and we can approve it probably in two weeks. I think we'd only. Did we take a motion to advertise? All right, is there a motion to advertise uh, the HTMA ordinance amendment uh, that was just described by um, uh, Mr. Bebro? by Vice President Hughes, second by Commissioner Andrus. Uh, and this is for publication of that ordinance. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we can publish that ordinance and then it'll be on our agenda two weeks from now. Thank you. All right, anything else? That is all I have, Mr. President. All right, we're gonna jump to our solic solicitor's report. Tax appeal settlement, I 1522 do. Bethlehem Pike. Good news? Depends on how you look at it. Ah. <laughs> I like to think it's good news. Okay. There's good news and bad news with this one. The assessment is going down. This is for David and David, the um, furniture store, which has been vacant, according to our estimation, about 10 years. So the good news is, is that they've been paying taxes on a thriving commercial business for the last 10 years, albeit one was not there. 
They filed the assessment appeal. There's been a reduction negotiated by the school district from about 2.5 million of an assessed value to 1.65 uh, million assessed value, and that equates to a market value of about three million fifty thousand dollars. The good news is they've been paying the, for the last ten years, and we've been getting that money. And this reduction doesn't start until this calendar year. So if we approve it, this will begin in 2018. So although they filed for something that would apply for last year, that was part of the settlement agreement that it wouldn't start. So I like to look at it as good news in that way. <laughs> no reimbursement, that's good. I understand that there possibly could be a buyer for that property. What does that mean in terms of that being sold? Um, we, I think Ken gets calls here and there for possible buyers and nothing's really come to life for that property, but it could be appealed in the future. I'm a thriving business again and therefore the assessment needs to be changed. Would initiate that repeal, right? A school district. Mm -hmm ride their coattails because they have the most at the state. Come to a thriving business tomorrow, that appeal has to happen to bring it back to value. Well, this, this settlement is for the year 2018, so I think we wouldn't get any bite at 2018, plus the ability to appeal 2018 needs to be filed in 17. You appeal by the tail end of the previous year. So the earliest would be 19. And that would mean if somebody moved in, you know, So I need authorization to execute this. Execute now, or is this for? I would next like to execute it now. That way, we don't miss the taxes. That you know, they can adjust it for this current year, and we don't miss that money. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, this is a pretty standard item as far as the tax appeal settlement process. This, as our properly identified, we ride the coattails of the school district. Uh, they typically uh, negotiate and or kind of uh, battle these out and uh, then we ride their coattails based on the, uh, the outcome of that. So, uh, commissioners, is this something that uh, we want to move on tonight based on our representation from our solicitor? All right, so then I'll take a motion to, um, I guess, approve and execute the tax appeal settlement for 1522 Bethlehem Pike. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Rogers. Second. Second by Commissioner Thomas. Any questions or comments? Being none, I'll call a question. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Hearing none, that is approved, and we can move ahead with uh, approval and execution of the agreement. That's all I have. All right, citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments on non-agenda items? Uh. <clears throat> Thank you for coming out, John. President. Uh, John Coffey was here last month, uh, last uh, meeting with uh, people from Fair Districts, and just following up on it to make sure you've gotten all the information necessary and when we may possibly expect a vote on the resolution. Good question. Just so you know, uh, all the documentation was received. In fact, uh, I know that I've just started to discuss it with residents, two in particular. I also know another commissioner here has also had conversation with residents to get their opinion and their feedback. Typically, we would take a couple of meetings to make a decision like that. I will tell you as an aside, uh, I'm interested to see what the end result is. I think that the legislature and the governor have to come to come to some conclusion within the next couple of days. So I think that that will, whatever that does to all of this, that'll probably all shake out before our next meeting. So that uh, that might help us move this along. And that's this is more of a long term. That that's a sure. short term thing. And the proposal uh, for that resolution is really long term. That goes to actually won't come into effect until 2022. So. Right, and I think that's when the next census is coming up. Um, I don't have a set, set time frame, but we did, we did say that we were going to circulate and, dis, and discuss it. So I think, uh, and John, separately, I know you've got my contact information. I do. I'm happy to uh, give you updates that way as well. Um, I would think that we'll have an opportunity to speak to more residents and then each other uh, prior to the next meeting. Thank you much, and we'll stay on you. Okay, that's good. All right, any other um, questions or comments, citizens' comments? Uh, seeing none, before we adjourn, I need to announce that we are going into executive session to discuss real estate. And uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion Thank by you. Vice President Hughes, second by Commissioner Rogers. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thanks for coming out, folks. <laughs>